Hey everyone, welcome back to Retro Modding News. I promise not to say this looks awesome or kinda, and if I say any of those things, feel free to politely harass me on Twitter. First up, QWERTY Moto has shown off this SNES Junior LED PCB light pipe thing. I thought this was a pretty interesting project. I think normally people use just an LED and some wires, I guess. I think you drill a little hole here and you maybe use some hot glue or something. At least that's what Voltar does to make a little lens. And then you have a power indicator where this SNES Junior normally doesn't have that. But this seems like it'd be quicker to solder one of these onto a SNES Junior rather than wire up a wire. That's a lot of work, you know, stripping the wires, putting on heat shrink if you're gonna do it correctly. Nice work, QWERTY Moto. I'm not sure if these are gonna be kits for sale, but this is really cool and a good addition to anybody's SNES Junior. Next, I just wanted to take a quick look at these Retro Game Restore normal SNES purple shells. I think Retro Game Restore already has clear and maybe smoke, so it's interesting to see different colors now there's this purple shell. I don't really love the look of the original Super Nintendo, even though that's what I grew up with. I have an original Super Nintendo, but I definitely think that these Retro Game Restore shells should go the way of Muramasa, how they have a ton of different colors for each of their shells. So it's nice to see different colors now, especially purple, which color matches with the Super Nintendo. Todd Gill went crazy this week with controller adapters. First is this SNES to Neo. This is basically a controller adapter that allows you to use Super Nintendo controllers with a Neo Geo. Here you see it with the Neo Geo AAS. I guess that's a Neo Geo CD. And here it is with the OMVS. The real reason that I'm excited about this is because typically the Super Nintendo to Neo Geo adapters, here's one I got from Neo Jamma. They typically come with these DB15 connectors that are not deep enough to fit into the controller slot on a Neo Geo at least on my OMVS. This isn't really a problem if you're using something like a Neo Geo controller extender. I have the Magic Trash Man clicky mod for the Neo Geo mini controllers. So this is actually long enough. And so this is a good length if you're making one of these adapters, if you want to use Super Nintendo controllers in your Neo Geo. It would be exciting to have one of these SNES to Neo adapters. That way you can use wireless Super Nintendo controllers with your Neo Geo. We're going to keep on the Todd train tonight and we'll look at his NES to PCE. Basically very similar to the SNES to Neo adapter where you can use Nintendo controllers with a PC engine. Again, all the same stuff applies. It'd be nice to use wireless NES controllers with a real PC engine. I know we've been going crazy over this 8-bit dough thing, trying to get those 8-bit dough adapters for PC engines. So this is a good stopgap if you want to use an NES controller. Speaking with controller adapters, Humble Bazooka showed off this Neo Geo BT adapter, which is basically a blue retro adapter for the Neo Geo. This is a good complement to Todd's SNES to Neo adapter. That would be more fitting if you wanted to use wired controllers or if you had specifically a Super Nintendo wired controller, whereas this adapter will work with any Bluetooth controllers. It's very cool to see these blue retro adapters get into different form factors almost every week. It seems like we have a new project. All right, moving on from controller adapters, let's take a look at this older picture of a PS2 digital prototype. This is an old prototype from 2019. Wobbling Pixels found it on psx-place.com, I guess. But at this point, I don't really care. I want to see some mods for the PS2. I really think that system has been neglected. There's no ODEs and there's no HDMI mods for it yet. We're due for both of those things. And before you argue with me about why do we need an ODE when we have things like free McBoot or whatever on the PS2, I don't care. I want an ODE. I want it to be as simple as take an SD card, put my games onto it and go. I don't want to mess around with any menus or anything like that. I don't want to mess around with hard drives. I don't want to mess around with Raspberry Pis. I just want to load my games onto the SD card and then play. Anyways, that was a little bit of a rant, but I wonder if the PS2 digital mod is floating around somewhere. Maybe if there's an updated prototype or something. I can't wait to see some physical pictures of that thing. I know I talked about this last week, but I can't get enough of these revent low pictures of these GameCube shells. I mean, come on. This blue is absolutely amazing. I like how it's this transparent blue. I think that this would be really cool on my GameCube. I, I actually kind of want a purple one. There's some more pictures here, kind of teasers of adding on a handle. He originally wasn't going to have a handle, but here's a cool picture of some red. And here's another picture of the big fan that can go inside and these fan output holes at the top there. Very cool stuff. This is your weekly reminder to go follow Reventlo on Twitter. All right, now we have some interesting 1440p resolution news. First up, Bordy teased that his new N64 Advance 2 should be able to do 1440p output for the N64. 
This is pretty interesting because this is higher than both the Ultra HDMI as well as the N64 Digital. I think that 1440p is going to be a target resolution in the coming years. Anyways, it's nice to see some updates from this project and from Bordy. I'm curious how far along he is on the process of making this N64 Advance 2. Finally, and reinforcing what I said about 1440p, Mike has figured out a way to line double 720p to 1440p on the RetroTINK 5X. I'm not sure if this is coming soon to a new firmware, but I think this update is more important than people realize. 720p output from consoles is sort of weird. I think you have things like the original Xbox, as well as the Game Boy consoleizers that we're used to. I could definitely see a use case now for doing the HDMI to component adapters, at least for my Game Boy Advance consoleizer, convert the HDMI to component, and then feed that into the 5X, and then line double that to 1440p. Basically gives you 1440p Game Boy Advance. But it's a cool way to extend some stuff that you might already have. If you already have a consoleizer and you have a 5X, you can integrate those things together now and get features out of one that don't exist in the other. There's so many different slot masks and scan line options in the 5X that now you can apply to the consoleizers. I bought some new computer monitors in the last year or so. I have this 4K one here, but it supports 1440p. And then this one behind me here is 1440p as well. I think it's gonna be a solid option if you're gonna invest in something, invest in a screen or a monitor that has solid 1440p support. But I'm curious to hear from you if you think that 1440p is important for retro gaming. Do you find a need for it in your setup? Do you wanna hear about and see more products that have 1440p output? Let me know in the comments below. That's it for this week. If you wanna suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.